most times I do my pre-trip, then I start the clock and log, and log it as a pre-trip. After I done the pre-trip, this morning I started the clock to do the pre-trip and figured out I had a problem while I was doing the pre-trip. An inside tire right there, it's not sitting on the rim. I don't know how it happened. Maybe I drug it off when I was busting this right turn last night. But hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Seaboard, North Carolina. Right up I-95. Not far from the uh, Virginia border. It's a tight squeeze. Make sure my trailer don't hit that down. Pull this shit tight. I'm creeping up here because of my trailer got real close to hitting those hitting some poles back there behind me. Boy, it didn't move them down poles. Required when exiting the truck. Good thing I got it on. Let's go check in. right here I never I never hauled the um I never hauled the regular lumber out of here I always get this stuff they call seaboard and ain't, every time I came ain't never been a line on it I don't see nobody over here right now I usually do the time lapse um, when my trailer get loaded, but I ain't gonna do it today because they, they load this stuff with like a, a big ass forklift. But like, I don't know, it's, it's a big forklift and it's gonna be bouncing the damn trailer too much. So I ain't gonna do it. If you look, if you look right here, if you see, I don't know if y'all can see that on the camera right now. It's, it's right there, that big yellow forklift. couple weeks ago I want to say I want to say it was last week I don't know if it was last week or sometime I forgot when it was yeah I know I got a backup right here they load one side then you got to move the truck and they load the other side yeah but like a couple weeks ago I had to do some drive for gold training and uh, I think it, I think last month's drive for gold training was uh, proper proper backing procedures. I think that's what it was, and I think this is good enough where I'm at now. That guy right there, he was on a scale in front of me, but he 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 didn't have his right pickup number. And now I see he's coming over here now, so I don't know if he's coming over here or not. Looks like. Looks like Let's see. Yeah, he, he kept on going. He kept on going. So look, yeah, I don't got I don't got nobody else. I don't got, turn these blinkers off. I don't got nobody else in front of me, so I just gotta wait on the guy to come. And then I'm but anyway, a couple weeks ago, drive for gold training, it was um proper back end procedures. And, and if you notice, only thing that I did wrong right now, and that's that's because you know I'm sitting on this property, I'm not going nowhere. I didn't have on my seatbelt. I didn't have on my seatbelt. That's the only thing I did wrong. But, uh, and, and I didn't blow the horn. I didn't blow the horn either. Cause uh, yeah, that was like drive for gold training. 
You supposed to roll down your window, which I did do. I just rolled my window down. You supposed to cut your blinkers on. I always, I, I ain't gonna say, yeah, 99% of the time I cut my blinkers on. Especially at the truck stop. To let the other drivers know you're backing up. But, uh, yeah, roll down your window, uh, blow you, and you supposed to get out and look too. That's another thing. Definitely supposed to get out and look. But, you know, sometimes you don't got to get out and look. Because I, I, it's plenty of space right here. Hey, some of y'all new drivers, you know, y'all might not be good with backing. Like, y'all need to get out and look. And then another point that it said on the video, uh, when is the best time to back? Like, you go to a ship or a receiver, and they tell you to go ahead and pull over there and, and this door or whatever, the best time to back is immediately. Immediately, when you're supposed to go where you're going, let's say you go to a ship or a receiver, you're walking back to your truck, you already got an overall picture of, of what's around your truck. And so immediately go ahead and back up. If you go want to go get in your truck and, you know, make you a sandwich or something or eat you a can of Vienna's or I don't know, whatever you want to do, uh, get on YouTube, watch a YouTube video. If you get back in your truck and do all that, you know, that might take five, ten minutes. By the time, by the time five, ten minutes gone by, and you seen it won't nothing behind your trailer. In five, ten minutes, somebody might put a forklift back there behind your trailer. So yeah, I mean, you know, that, that's just, that's that by the book stuff, man, that uh that I had to do on that drive for gold trailer. But you know, man, you just pretty much use common sense, man, backing up this truck. If if you if you don't know what's back there, get out and look. Hey, I I, I ain't trying to preach to y'all, I'm just giving y'all a couple key points that may help the new drivers because i know a lot of new drivers watch me a lot of new drivers you know you know stuff like that man stuff for y'all to keep in mind get out look blow your horn don't blow the other horn you know you might scare somebody blow your horn cut your hazards on another another question up there how fast should you back um i think it was like one mile an hour like earlier today when i dropped off those stones uh, I had to do a straight back and bust a turn. So I just went straight back. I just held the wheel, went straight back, probably going about five, six miles an hour. I did cut my blinkers on because there was some forklift guys out there. They weren't around, but I just cut them on anyway. That's just a habit for me when I back. Most time I just cut them blinkers on. So anyway, I'm about to get out, get my cheetah bar, and uh, go ahead and unloosen these straps because I keep mine pretty tight on the trailer when uh, they ain't using them, cause I have had an experience where one of them kind of kind of rolled out a little bit and was hitting upside of my tire. And uh, so yeah, most of the time I keep them pretty tight. So I'm gonna go ahead, and this gonna be an easy load too. This this, this load right here, if last time I picked it up, it didn't even take up the whole trailer, cause I got out. Move my tarps out the way because the guy at the office says it's gonna take the whole trailer. So I got out, moved my tarps. Then when the guy came with the forklift, he was like, "Yo, you should, you could have left the tarps right there." And so uh, I'm gonna leave them right there for now. And if if they change, cause cause this place too, they don't want you out of the truck. They want you sitting in the truck. They don't want you out while the forklift is back there. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bust those down while I'm waiting. And yeah, this load, man. It, it might it might take about eight straps and i think i got i think i got like eight straps just on this side of my trailer if y'all go back to that new york video that oversized um load i took in new york i actually counted the straps on that video so it's either eight or nine on this driver's side the other side i got like four so i, I probably definitely got enough on just this driver's side for the whole load so that's what i'm about to do right now Hey, I'm just sitting here running my mouth, man. Don't mind me. Flatbed gang, let me get my ass out and do some work. Yo, I just got out. I just got out and uh, went ahead and unloosened up those straps, like I said I was going to do. And I counted them. I got nine on the driver's side. Nine over there. So maybe that might be enough for the whole load, depending on how, uh, how big it is. Might put four or four. Might put four. The last time I had like two, two sections. So I might put four and four. Since I got nine, I might throw an extra one. Like I said on my live stream the other night, one, 
if you, when you put what you need, you know, throw two extra ones. One for the company, one for your family. But, but matter of fact, that's what somebody told me. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to say one for the family, then you put one for the company. But you got to put your family first. Also got to also got to have the company kind of first cuz you know what? You fuck up you fuck up your job. You fuck up the company, you ain't going to be able to provide for your family. So that's that's kind of a fine line, man. Company family, company family. Hey. You can't have one without the other. Cuz you know you got your company family cuz I talk to a lot of PNS drivers. A lot of PNS drivers talk to me. Hey, I talk to a lot of a lot of Melton drivers. I talked to, uh, I got a buddy who works over there in Jordan. I got a buddy that used to work at Cypress. Now he went back home to do local work at uh, Pulling for Smithfield. Uh, my, my buddy Aaron, he used to work for uh, Werner. And he uh, he told me that he delivered to the uh, Smithfield, a Smithfield plant plant before. Uh, you see a lot of CR England trailers out there. Pulling, picking up that, uh, pulling the reefers, picking up that pork. So, uh, I got I got uh, two buddies back home that work for Smithfield, work local. Uh, one of them, he pulls feed to the uh, to the hog farms, and he pulls feed. The other guy, he just got hired. He left Cyprus. Now he went to that job. Now he starts orientation Monday, and uh, I don't I, f I forgot what he said. Uh, he he's gonna be pulling hogs, cause uh, that's what the guy told him. He gonna he gonna be pull actually pulling hogs. So, you know, he might get kind of dirty because, you know, when you pull them hogs, you know, you got to take them. Because, you know, they might have, like, little hogs at one place. Then you might got to pick them up and take them to another spot, like, when they get a little older. So, you know, transport hogs. And uh, you got to get dirty because, you know, you got to get the hogs out the trailer. You know, when you go drop the trailer off, you don't just drop the trailer. Well, you might, you might drop and hook the trailer, grab you an empty trailer. And uh, somebody might, uh, somebody else might get the hogs off. But you know, like, if you, if you, uh, got a damn fly here. Flies are annoying inside the truck. A fly will make you crash this truck, I tell you. But yeah, you, yeah, sometimes you got to go back there and make sure you get all the hogs off the trailer. Because you can't, you can't, uh, you can't let the hogs out the trailer. And then, then you get 10 miles down the road you, and you still see you got one hog in that trailer. Hey, hey, you, you costing the company money, man. They, they might fire you, man. And you know, you know, if, if maybe if a hog die on your watch, you know, maybe maybe they might want to take that out your check. Hey, cause that one hog, that one hog with Smithfield, I, I used to work at Smithfield. I worked at Smithfield for a long time. I, I worked inside the plant uh, on the cut floor. Man, that one hog, one hog now, I don't know how, I don't know how much, exactly how much you can make off of one hog. But like I know you can go buy a hog, like if you want to buy a hog, cook on the grill, it might cost you uh maybe three to four hundred dollars to buy a hog. But that same one hog that you know when you take it inside that plant and, and they they kill it and sell it. You got man, you got pork chops and ribs, loins, pig feet, you know, that one hog, man, that one hog might make a thousand dollars worth of meat. <laughs> Hey, you gotta be careful with them hogs, man. And then, uh, then they got the other guys out there. Hey, I wouldn't want to do that job. They got the guys. They gotta clean, the, clean the trailers out. Like every time they they use the trailer, you got, you know, that uh that hog manure is it, it, contam it contaminates the environment. So you know you got the guys that gotta go out there and clean the trailers out. Hey, that's that's a bad job. You know you gotta put the wetsuit on. You gotta climb in the trailer with the hose pipe and spray all the all the manure out. Notice I'm not cussing. I could say the S word, but manure. I don't want <laughs> you gotta spray that manure out and whatever else in there. There's a guy on the golf cart right here. Yeah, it must be a must be a supervisor. The guy on that forklift, he ain't came back around here, man. Yeah, this video right here probably just be, be me running my mouth because I ain't ran my mouth in a long time. But yeah, my other buddy, he got that. Yeah, that's what he doing now. So yeah, I got I got buddies everywhere. Back to what I was saying, company, family. You need you you don't you don't not not necessarily saying this company I'm at. Check this out. Y'all see that H? That's Hornady. I'm not at that company. Look on the back. 
Y'all see that? Melton, Bronze Knight. I take pride in I take pride in, in my experience level. Look on that side. I got a got a new core steel. They got families out there. They got families. They got to feed too. So the company and the family, no matter what company you at, unless you work for yourself and you your own company, the company and the family go hand in hand. So I started off talking about some straps and took it to a whole nother level. Yeah, you can't have one without the other. So make sure you stay safe, man. Make sure you stay safe. Throw, throw an extra strap, one for the company, one for the family. And vice versa, however you want to put it. If you want to throw a third strap for your grandma, your granddaddy, your uncle, Hey, whatever you got to do. Whatever you got to do, man. They say no such thing as over security. Yeah, that, that was that forklift guy right there. He just dropped something off. Hey, better, better, break, his, better break his ass back. If I get out, put them gloves on, might be some issues out here. But anyway, I ran my mouth enough. I'm going to sit here and wait. Grab me one of my breakfast bars back there. Cause uh, if you if you see at the beginning of this video, I had a I had a uh, a blowout this morning on my trailer tire, but uh, luckily it didn't blow out while I was driving. When I woke up this morning, it, it was flat. I, I got ready to uh, I put in the truck in gear, and uh, it was like uh like like the air pressure kept dropping. And I, I know y'all like well. well if, if you should have caught that on the post trip, I, I I didn't see it on the post trip. It wasn't it wasn't um I don't know maybe it still had air in it. You know those trailer tires. You know the, the air pumps the tire up. But this morning it was uh it was it was it was coming out the rim and it didn't happen until I turned. So I was thinking you know like you know when you turn on these spread axles you can't you can't drag the tire on the spread axle because it could drag. Cause that's what I thought I did. I thought I. I thought I dragged it because last night I had to bust a, a real sharp right turn last night. So I thought that I drug it or something. But uh, when the guy took it off, it actually had a, it actually the tire the tire had a hole in it somewhere. But he, they fixed it. Still made it. Anyway, flatbed game, like I always say. Just waiting on this guy. Guess what? What I say I had I had over here nine straps. So guess what? I'm putting three, four, and three. That's ten. Three, four, and three. Yeah, that's ten. So I got to throw one from the other side. So I gotta throw one from the other side. Oh, fucking screw. So I, I put one right there on that side. So three, four, and three. Throw one from the other side back right there. So that's three, four, and three. I got two right there, so on the other side, I throw one more back. There's a guy, there's a guy, man, that keeps commenting on my videos. 
he made the same comment twice. He made it on an older video, and then he made it, he made it last night on my other video. And he was like, every Tom, Dick, and Harry is making YouTube videos on how, on how to be a truck driver or whatever. That's what he said. And like I said, it ain't the first time he made the comment. He's already made it. He already made it one time before. And the first time I commented back to him, the first time I commented back and I told the guy, I said, well, if that's the way you feel, I said, why don't you make your own videos about, you know, your, your journey or whatever. Cause that's why I do this. I do this because, you know, I'm documenting my journey. That's why I do it. And he never commented back when I told him that. <clears throat> last, last night when he commented, he basically, Last night when he commented, he, he basically said the same thing. He was like, every time Dick and Harry's making YouTube videos on how to do things. But last night, the only thing he said different was, he said, um, he, at the end, he said, I've been driving for 34 years or something, something like that. Uh, now this one right here, I gotta put a little more arm on it. So anyway, Put some arm on this one. So anyway, he said the same thing last night. I didn't, but but like I said, he said he's been driving for like 30, 34, 35 plus years or whatever. So I don't, I, I didn't, I didn't reply back, but I did delete the comment. So whatever your name is, whoever that guy was, hey man, let me ask you this. And, and then he said, I'm not a hater. I'm just saying, okay. If you're not a hater, why do you make those comments? If you feel like every time Dick and Harry is making YouTube videos and you've been driving for 35, 40 plus years, why the hell? Why tell me why you still on tell me why you still driving trucks then? If you've been driving 35, 40 years. If, if you've been driving that long, he probably he probably like 60 years old if you've been driving that long. So anyway, if you've been driving that long, man, why why are you why aren't you out here trying to encourage the guys that's that's just started and getting experience? Why why are you watching all these Tom Dixon Harrys that's been making videos for that, that on how they been on what they do? Why are you watching the videos then? You say you're not a hater. So, sound like a hater to me. If it quack like a duck. I can't talk while I'm, I can't talk while I'm pulling that out because it's too loud. But what I was about to say was, if it quack like a duck, if it walk like a duck, it must be a duck. And you sound like a hater, buddy. But I don't. Hey, I don't care. Keep hating. Every time you watch one of my videos, that just gives me another viewer. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you still you still uh, viewed it. Yeah, like I said, this ain't gonna take long, gang. All I got, I got what? One, two, three more, three more on this side. Now all I gotta do is go over there and tighten them up. That's it. And I'm gonna throw one more from the other side. Ah, gotta put some arm on. Gotta put some arm strength on that one. Yeah, it's probably one of the easiest loads you'll ever get, man. <laughs> when you just throw them all like this, it's one of the easiest loads you'll get. When I walk around to the other side, you might see that uh that forklift I was telling you about. You see how big this stuff is? Yeah, if I would've uh if I would have put my little camera on the top of that uh top of that tractor, it would have fell off. Cause the guy be be dropping this stuff down he just ah. yeah he puts it up there then he just drops it y'all 
I'm seeing enough time lapses anyway. Yeah, y'all seen enough of them. I don't gotta roll this one that much because it ain't that tall. Yeah, this one ain't that bad. It don't take much arm strength. I definitely got this technique down pat. <laughs> As y'all can tell. I ain't doing nothing nobody else can't do. What? I just stepped in that fucking water. Excuse my language. I'm trying to trying to cut down on the language, you know. We got kids watching. See that fork lift? I got a screw right here. Only thing gonna slow me down. I, I wish I could take that damn screw out. Took the whole strap out. Yeah, it's a screw that's holding that uh holding that binder up there. I took one out on the other side the other day, but I I don't hardly use these on this side that much. So I didn't take it out, but I need to take it out so I could be able to slide it back. But I just took the strap out and put it back here. So the only thing I got left to do is just, you know, tighten these straps up. So I'm gonna stop recording for now. So I can go ahead and get it done. I talked to y'all enough, gang. Put a little twist in these. I ain't got no tarp on it. Put a little, just a little twist. All right, I'll check in when I'm done. That's it. That's it. One, two, three. Y'all ain't see me just hit that wall side there. That's it. Favorite two words, low complete. We out.
Thank you.